Humans have been the smartest creatures on the planet for a very long time, and according to a new study, Neanderthals diverged from modern humans only 408,000 years ago. Other recent evidence, including fossils and DNA, suggests that the Neanderthal and modern human lineages split between 500,000 and 650,000 years ago. According to a new estimate from a study titled Dating Ancient Splits in Phylogenetic Trees with Application to the Human-Neanderthal Split, our species diverged from Neanderthals only 408,000 years ago, which is substantially later than previous estimates. Previous estimates suggested that the divergence occurred more than 800,000 years ago. Coincidentally, the European jaguar went extinct around 350,000 years ago, which is the same time that Neanderthals evolved into the apex predator in Europe. Did the Neanderthals have a spiritual connection to the jaguar? Because the Neanderthals left no written records, determining their spiritual beliefs is difficult, and much of our understanding is based on archaeological evidence and inference. While it is impossible to recreate the behavior of a species that vanished from the face of the earth 40,000 years ago, the Neanderthal genome revealed that they share nearly 100% of their DNA with us. This discovery, combined with other recent discoveries, has led to speculation that they were very similar to us. Meanwhile, more and more evidence suggests that Homo sapiens and Neanderthals are more closely related than previously thought. Neanderthals are a type of extinct hominin that lived in Eurasia until about 40,000 years ago. The physical differences between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals revealed by fossil remains include a shorter and broader frame, a wider pelvis, and heavier bones. However, mounting evidence suggests that we are not so different from our heavy-browed hominin relatives. Neanderthals were highly intelligent, artistic, and adaptable. They appear to have taken great care when burying their deceased relatives, implying emotional sensitivity and possibly even a sense of their own mortality. The Neanderthals was never far from us when the split occurred. We are 99.7% genetically identical, and it's clear that rampant interbreeding occurred between the species time and again. Neanderthal genes are especially common in people of European descent who inherit about 2% of their genomes from Neanderthal ancestors. Researchers have long debated when the last common ancestor of Neanderthals and humans lived, indicating the point at which the two species diverged on their evolutionary journey. In fact, the study found the most recent common ancestor Homo sapiens and Denisovans split 841,000 years ago, considerably later than prior estimates. Furthermore, the Cima de los Huesos hominin, a.k.a. Homo antecessor from Spain, also split from Homo sapiens 841,000 years ago, suggesting that this fossil is in fact a Denisovan, as we hypothesized in another recent video. Exactly where that last common ancestor lived is a subject of intense debate, with the most likely geographic location to be in the Middle East or Southwest Asia, while some believe it to be Africa. There is no evidence of Neanderthals ever living in Africa, but there is substantial evidence of Homo sapiens in Southwest Asia. Scientists recently used computer algorithms to study both species' genomes and calculate the time to most recent common ancestor. As stated, their findings suggest that the split between modern humans and Neanderthals happened only 408,000 years ago, which is a surprisingly late date. This most recent estimate is highly mathematical, and no archaeologists or paleoanthropologists were directly involved. Nonetheless, it is consistent with other recent studies that suggest the divergence occurred much later than previously thought. Many anthropologists theorize that early Neanderthals underwent a process of evolution called Neanderthalization, where they evolved the classic features of Neanderthal skeletons from a more gracile last common ancestor. This makes the 330,000-year-old Jebel Irhud a candidate for the last common ancestor, or an individual from the very recent split between these species. The famous Jebel Irhud, early Homo sapiens from Morocco, has features of both Homo sapiens and Neanderthals. This creature has the gracile face of modern humans, but the elongated brain case and large mandible of Neanderthals. Interestingly, 416,000 years ago, 
a brief warm period where parts of Greenland melted and global sea levels rose to above current levels before the climate suddenly fell back into Ice Age conditions. This would have created a situation where hominins migrated to Europe and then were forced south by the extremely sudden onset of an Ice Age, as dramatized in the movie The Day After Tomorrow. An interesting side note is the fact that Iberia has served as an Ice Age refuge many times in human history, most recently only 30,000 years ago. When other humans in Europe died out, a small population survived for several millennium, isolated in the far southwest corner of Eurasia. This isolation creates a population bottleneck, leading to mutations and founder effects where a new species is born. As previously stated, we are 99.7% genetically identical, so what is the difference between Homo sapiens and Neanderthals? Neanderthals, with their protruding brows and stocky build, are frequently depicted as a primitive prototype of the modern human. Nonetheless, as our understanding of our extinct ancestor grows, the image of the Neanderthal has evolved from that of an archaic ape to that of a surprisingly sophisticated hominid. The physical differences between Neanderthals and Homo sapiens are evident in fossil remains. To begin with, the ancient species was shorter and wider, with a larger pelvis, heavier bones and more muscle. According to evolutionary anthropologists, this thick-set build may have allowed Neanderthals to retain more body heat, allowing them to survive the cold Eurasian climate. Modern humans, who descended from warmer climates on the other hand, may have had less need for bulky bodies, explaining our flimsier frames. Other theories propose that the robust physique of Neanderthals was an adaptation to hunting large game without sophisticated weaponry, though debates over the evolutionary purpose of this robustness remain unresolved. Moving up to the face, modern humans are easily distinguished by their true chin, which ancient hominids lacked. Neanderthals also had much larger noses than we do, which may have helped them warm up the cold air they inhaled before it entered their lungs. Alternatively, these may have endowed Neanderthals with greater respiratory capacity, allowing them to power their massive bodies. Whatever the reason for Neanderthals' massive noses, it's likely that when our ancient ancestors mated with them, we inherited some of their large nose genes. Finally, Neanderthal teeth analysis has revealed that they likely matured much faster than Homo sapiens, possibly reaching adulthood at around 15 years of age. The shape and size of the skull provide the most information about how we differ from Neanderthals. Our cranial vault is roughly the same size as that of our ancient relatives, but while we have a rounded or globular brain case, Neanderthals had a flatter dome. This alone does not tell us much about cognitive differences, but a recent study discovered that Homo sapiens carry a single genetic mutation that promotes the development of neurons in the prefrontal cortex, the part of the brain responsible for complex thought. While Neanderthals may have had a slightly larger brain than we do, our superior intelligence may be due to more advanced cerebral wiring. What's more, despite the widespread belief that Neanderthals were not as intelligent as us, there is evidence that they practiced chemistry, buried their dead, and even created art. The intentional burial of the dead, the presence of grave goods, and the arrangement of bodies in certain ways, which may suggest ritualistic practices, all lend support to this theory. In Spain, evidence for a 50,000-year-old Neanderthal burial ground has been discovered, including the remains of at least three individuals. The arrangement of remains at the burial site suggests that Neanderthals may have performed funerary rituals and possessed symbolic thought before modern humans. Researchers also discovered bones of two articulated panther paws, so it's possible that the paws were added to the bodies before burial, possibly for ritual reasons. This begs the question, should Neanderthals be considered human? Some anthropologists think you have to be very rigorous with this categorization and would not be willing to admit Neanderthals into the Homo sapiens family tree. However, as we have discussed, new discoveries have revealed that Neanderthals were far more sophisticated than previously thought. But what about the archaeological evidence that is cited in favor of uniting Homo neanderthalensis with Homo sapiens, including the evidence that they had cultural behaviors, including spiritualism, 
burying their dead, worshipping animal spirits, and creating cave paintings. Those that deny the humanness of Neanderthals say that, as intriguing as that is, Neanderthals should be denied the species classification Homo sapiens neanderthalensis, because behaviours have the potential to be more fluid, evolve faster, and spread more easily within and between species than traits based on anatomy and DNA. Let us know in the comments if you think Neanderthals should be classified as Homo sapiens neanderthalensis. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our human history. Until next time, stay curious and stay questioning. Please check out the other highly compelling videos on our channel.